Okay, welcome to the weekly Inside Real Estate Tactics webinar. What we're going to do this week is a follow-up to last week where we just did some basic Facebook ads. This week we're going to do uh, Facebook lead ads. So the topic is getting started with Facebook lead ads. And I'm going to jump right in here and just talk about what a lead ad is. I, I should mention, as I always do, that in the document next to this video, there's links to the recordings both on Facebook and on YouTube. So there's a playlist you can access on both channels with all these recordings uh, from week to week. And be, be sure to go back and check out the earlier episodes if you want to. All right, so what is a Facebook lead ad? First off, it's a little bit more advanced, this technique, than what we were doing last week where we were just running clicks to our conversion or, or, conversion <coughs> or KV core uh, sites. Lead ads actually collect the information about the lead within Facebook. So let's go ahead and look at an example. Let me open this up here. Okay, so I'm going to have to show this in my news feed. And if you're looking at this too uh, on your computer, you're going to have to do the same thing. And for some reason, when you look at those preview links, if you ever do that when you're watching these webinars or clicking in the docs, they always put it as the second post. It's really strange uh, and can be a little, <laughs> a little confusing. But if you scroll down to the second post, as this has been shared to you. And here's an ad. This is from Bond Street Mortgage. If you're thinking about buying your first home, Fixer Upper might be a good option. Click to learn about Fixer Uppers. And the key thing that's going on with a lead ad is that when this Learn More button gets clicked, Wink. Look what happens. Pre-filled into uh, a form within Facebook is the contact info of somebody. Now, I had to log into Michelle, my wife's account here, um, because if you already opt into a lead ad one time, it won't let you see this form again. Uh, so there you go, right there. And then when the person submits, that information is going to be uh, captured. Now, the cool thing here, of course, is that this info this info is actually uh, accurate. It's the information that Facebook has on file. So one of the big reasons why you're going to want to use lead ads is to get this accurate contact info. Very, very useful stuff. And especially on the uh, in terms of getting an accurate phone number uh, versus sending traffic over to your conversion site and hoping somebody puts in the right number, a lot of people will look at a lead ad form and just kind of hit submit to continue to the thing that was offered without giving too much thought to what was in these boxes. And a lot of times this experience is also mobile, uh, so they, very, they pass it very quickly and continue on to the next thing and you collect an accurate cell number. All right, so uh, how to run a lead ad. That's what we're going to talk about next. Um, and I'll mention again that accurate number. This is a very big reason why you're going to want to struggle through and learn how to do this. Uh, it's very, very useful and can be very powerful uh, with respect to generating you higher quality leads. All right, so how to run a lead ad. I'm going to go into my dashboard here. So we're going to go into Facebook and we're going to click to create an ad. And then the objective that we're looking for is the lead generation objective right here. So let's go ahead and use that. We're going to name our campaign. I'm just going to call this demo. You can call yours whatever you want. Continue. And then this is a lot of this is going to be the same as running a Facebook ad the way we did last week. So uh, I'm just going to pick St. Petersburg, Florida. Set my targeting. Actually, I think what I'll do today is I'll, I went to meant to run this example last week. So let's call this a bonus on last week's niche ad topic where we ran a handful of niche ads. Uh, let's advertise land for sale. All right. So I'm going to pick people who I think would likely want to invest in land. And that's just going to be people who are a little, little older. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. Maybe I'll do Robert Kiyosaki. This would be an investor just people I assume might be in, in, interested in investing in real estate. So it's 5,100 people in St. Pete. That's enough for me right now. Okay. Uh, now the automatic places versus edit placements here uh, for lead ads isn't as critical because the audience network does not apply. So you can actually leave the automatic placements. And I find that that works just fine with lead ads. Another thing with lead ads is your budgeting. You're going to want to make sure that you set the budget to be high enough to at least generate a lead a day. And in most markets, what you're going to be looking at in most offers is probably between $3, maybe you'll get lucky and do $2, all the way up to $15 to $20, depending on the kind of ads you're doing. If you're doing seller ads, it's going to be a little more expensive. Um, you know, so I, I would I would say that you're going to want to at least be at $20 a day uh, for your budget in the beginning to make sure that you get some leads. So I'll leave it at that. 
And the other thing you can do is you can set lowest and target costs. Now, I've been using this a lot more lately. The lowest cost uh, will do just that. It'll try to get you to lowest lead, but as you try to get your budget, if you try to scale a campaign bigger and raise your budgets and get more leads, the cost per lead is actually going to go up. The target cost will maintain a stable average cost per lead as you raise, raise your budget. But there is an issue with that. If you pick target costs and you pick too low, you'll get no traffic. Um, now, what a lot of people recommend um, that I know is they, they recommend setting your target cost per lead a little higher all right, so that you're sure that you'll get the traffic. And if you don't, then you know you need to raise this bid. And then you might be able to come back later and lower that. Another thing to know about target costs is this is kind of an auction system where you're bidding against what other people are bidding. So if you know that a real estate, a Facebook lead ad is going to be five to twenty dollars roughly, um, and you want to make sure you get some fast, you might set this at twenty dollars per lead. Uh, and that doesn't mean it's going to cost that much. It's just so that you're bidding in a range that will ensure you're you get the impressions and you get the ad. I'm going to keep it simple for today and say just start out with this lowest cost option and then dive into this target cost stuff later once you get really good at this. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. It says it found an error. I must have forgot to do something here. Yep, oh, good. I did forget to pick my fan page, and this is very important. Um, I'm going to pick my Property Knox page, and what will happen the first time you do this, and it's kind of hard, disorienting, if you don't, ex you have to accept the lead ad terms. There's this little pop-up, and I've already done it for this page, but if you don't do that, it won't let you run your ad, and it'll be like, you have to accept the terms, and you're like, where, what are you talking about, where? Well, this is where you have to go. <laughs> you have to view the terms and click a little text box, okay? So just a little tip for you. The first time you run a lead ad for a specific fan page, it's gonna run you through and make you accept the terms, but Facebook doesn't do a great job uh, as far as I remember of telling you where to go accept those terms. So that's where. All right. So let's go ahead and create the ad. Um, I'm going to do a land ad. All right. For the niche. So let's, I need a single image of a piece of land. I'm going to pause and find that. Okay. So I've gone ahead and made an image similar to what we did last week in the Facebook session. I'll reference that. I, I got a picture of waterfront land. Uh, in Pinellas County and I drew some arrows on it so that it would stick out. So this offer is going to be waterfront land for sale in Pinellas County, Florida. So uh, uh, see a... Com okay, waterfront lots and land for sale in Pinellas County, Florida. Okay. Priced from, right, remember our trick here, priced from, and I'm going to go back to the list. $28 million. <laughs> So that was the high end. Down to, this is, tw I'm going to use 29000 So that must be a slip. Oh, no, that's an actual lot. All right, so 29000 to $28 million. That'll be a fun ad. So from 29000 to 28 million plus waterfront land for sale in Pinellas County. See the list now. Okay, so this is kind of my basic formula when I do a niche focused list of property. Again, referencing last week. I'm not going to belabor the creative here too much today. We'll just say learn more. What I'm more concerned about is showing you this next part where we're going to build the lead ad form. Okay, so that's my ad. This should do pretty well, honestly. Uh, it's, it's kind of sexy and interesting. So if you're somewhere where you have a lot of waterfront stuff, I have done this in the past, and land in particular, if you want to build a list of investors or get a little creative with the way you're bringing people into your folder, just build your whole business around selling land because uh, it can be an easier transaction in a lot of cases. Uh, this is a good place to go. So uh, down here, it's going to say lead form. I have a bunch that I've created for this. Um, for this fan page, so there's some existing. I will bring up a big point now that you'll see in the document. Um, you cannot go back and edit any of these. It is extremely ignoring, annoying, <laughs> ignoring. <laughs> it's extremely annoying. You cannot go back and edit. So anytime you make a mistake or you want to change a lead ad form, you actually have to go back and duplicate an existing lead ad form. Um, and what's 
problematic with that is that you also have to go back and change your zap wherever you're pushing the data, which we're going to get to in a minute. So just keep that in mind. Um, this is a minefield. This is more difficult than running regular ads. And the reason you're going to do it again is so that you can get that accurate contact info. It's a trade off time, um, you know, versus quality. Do you want just to be able to run a real easy one that gets you people opting in directly on your conversion or core site? Or do you want to be able to run these lead ads that definitely get you the accurate email name, phone number. A lot of times you can get the address too. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead. I digress. Let's go ahead and create our new lead form for this ad. So I'll call this what it is. This is a Pinellas Waterfront. Waterfront plan. That's the name of my form. I'm going to need that name when I build the zap later. Um, Now, it says here, the form type, more volume or higher intent. I like to leave this as more volume, and I also like to turn off the intro. The reason I turn off the intro is that I feel that uh, this is kind of a snap judgment thing when people see this form pop up, and I don't want to add extra copy and words that could distract them or confuse. So I really just want to keep it very simple, and you'll see when I untoggled that, it got rid of this headline text. It also automatically set the image to be exactly the same image that they saw in the ad. All right. Now, if you're really good at copywriting and you think you want to sell further or you have a need to say more, then you can do this intro. I'm going to leave it off for now and we recommend that for, for most of us. Next thing you can set is your headline. It says learn more by providing your info below. I like to set that to just be what the headline was. Pinellas County Waterfront Land for sale. And then see the list now. That's kind of a good template right there. It's reiterating the exact thing that they just clicked to see. And then right here is where I'm going to have some fun. I'm going to collect some data. Now, I'm going to uncheck these because there's an order that I like these to occur in. I don't like to collect the full name. I like to collect first name, last name, email, phone in that order. And over here on the right side, they're actually going to show up in the order that you check them. That's why I started off by unchecking them all. So it's not kind of out of order and in a weird uh, random flow for the person. Okay. So first name, last name, email, phone. Another thing I'll mention is if you're doing seller ads or you want to send stuff by direct mail using Zapier or native integrations, you are able to collect the street address, city, state, and zip. Um, and you can also ask custom questions right here. And there are cases where you might find it useful to ask custom questions, but this is going to fall under the same category to me as asking for an additional intro where you're adding extra copy and confusing people. I've both had great success with custom questions and also had campaigns totally die because I'm asking for too much and it's requiring people to stop and do an extra thing rather than just submit and give you the info. So recommendation right now would be that this is an advanced thing that you should stay away from if you're just getting started with lead ads and just stick to collecting first name, last name, email, and phone and you'll be happy with your results. Okay, next step here is to set your privacy policy link. Now, all of our sites at Conversion Plus and KV Core, our privacy policy is exactly as I'm about to show you. So just do your main URL. So it's your main URL slash, and at the end, just write privacy.php. Okay, just like this. So if you want to pause and save that in another notepad or something, you can do that, pause this video, but it's going to be privacy.php. Once that's set, we're going to go down to the thank you screen. And we have two options here. Um, and I want to talk about this on the doc. I, I probably wrote this in. I think I did. Yeah. You have the option to do a, an after opt redirect link or phone call. So let's address that first, the redirect link versus phone call. You can toggle this button type to where it says call business right here. And if you do that, they can actually call you right away. Now, what, what I've been doing lately and especially when I run these ads for conversion and KV core sites, is I have been using this call option only because when the person clicks, if you do the link option and they go to your site, they are going to be asked to register again. So if you do the call option, you can do something like this. Great. That list has been emailed to you. In the meantime, If you want to click the button below, you'll be connected with an agent who specializes in selling Pinellas County land. He'll let you know 
talking about the best waterfront Pinellas land deal he knows about right now. Yeah, the typo and specializes. So, so that's kind of the approach. You can get people clicking your phone number right here. Call agent now. Now, if you do the call, it's going to be very, very critical that you actually email them the list. And I'm going to show you that once we get to Zapier and once we set up the automation at Conversion and Core. But it's going to be very important you do that. Of course, your other option is to go ahead and just have them visit the website to see the link. So here I am at my site. I can copy the link and just paste that in here. And the only thing with that is that, yes, you are going to collect a lead right now, but that user is going to experience the need to re-opt in again. Now, that's not an awful thing. I've generated plenty of leads that way. It's not really a big deal. And at least you're grabbing the contact info first. A lot of people who have already opted in will opt in again uh, so that it can start tracking uh, the leads. Uh, by doing it by email with the call, of course, you're also allowing yourself um, to prep them in the email. Hey, you know, you might have to opt in again when you click this. You know, uh, Another option here I just want to bring up if you want to get extra fancy is you can do the view website and send them instead of sending them straight to the list, you can send them to a video introduction of yourself. So you could have a YouTube video or a blog post on your site that you send them to where you go, hey, thanks for getting a land list. Um, uh, I'm here, I specialize in this. Down below is your link to the list, and in that video, you can prep them for the fact they have to opt in again. All right, so I think I just gave you a lot of stuff there related to this, just but bottom line is there's lots of options. Just be, be mindful of the fact that they are gonna have to opt in again and try to make the user experience as smooth uh, and as unconfusing as possible by either using a video or by explaining it in an email. Uh, or just send them to the link and hope that they opt in again. Those are your options. Okay, so I'm good now. I'll switch this back to phone. Pop my number in there. Spelled Pinellas wrong, but that's fine. I have the name of my form here ready to go. And that is it. I kind of, I set my targeting. I've got the ad ready to go. I spent that extra few minutes setting up my lead ad. And that's what's required at the Facebook side of things to get this started. Okay, so now that I have my ad running, I'm going to need to set up a way to inject the data that's collected from the ad into my conversion and KV Core accounts. And the program we're going to use to do that is called Zapier. Now, in order to do this, you are going to need a Zapier Pro account. I think it's $20 a month, but I think anybody using these Facebook lead ads and spending that money, the $20 isn't going to be a big deal to you. And sorry, but it is a very critical uh, part of the process. There's really no way around it. Zapier, you can't do it with a free account of Zapier, uh, and they require the premium to use Facebook lead ads. All right, so the first thing we're going to do with respect to using Zapier, we're going to create our Zapier account, leave your tab open in a new window, and then we're going to log into either conversion or KV core, whichever one you're using. And we're going to start to link up. We're going to create our first zap. And I want to show you how to do this in each platform right now. We'll start with conversion plus. In conversion plus, you're going to go up to your name at the top right. You're going to go to my settings. And you're going to see right here, it says link to conversion on Zapier. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to bring up the invite dialog here in a second. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and do make a zap with conversion. Now the trigger, the first time I do this, it's going to try to set it up so conversion is setting the data out. But actually what I want to do is I want to use conversion as my action step where the data is going. So I'm going to go down here first. I'm going to click to choose app and I'm going to choose conversion like this. I'm going to do add a lead. Don't worry about up here. I'll show you that in a second. And then I'm going to have to link up a new account. So down here, I'm going to click connect an account. And this is where you're going to plug in your Zapier key. And that key is right down a little bit below the photo. It should be right underneath. I'm going to let them know it should be actually right next to it instead of a few lines down. But this is the key you need right here. So you're going to take that, pop it in here to the dialog box, click Yes, Continue. 
And you probably saw my screen. I, I work with a lot of conversion accounts doing zaps. Um, so you won't have that many there. It'll be blank and you're just going to set up your first key and that will authorize it right away. Just do conversion demo. You can name the different accounts as well, like I did there. So if you are doing for multiple people on your team or something, uh, go ahead and name it so you know what which one it is in the future. And then I'm going to use this, this account to show you guys how to do this. It's pretty much the same thing with KV Core. So let me just show you how to link up and do exactly what I did on KV Core. That is going to be uh, under Lead Engine. Then click Lead Dropbox. And then it's going to be right here. You see the Zapier key? That's what you're going to need there. Now, for conversion, I, I thought that you had to click. Um, I think you could just search for the app in Zapier. You can search for KV Core and it'll pop up for you. So you don't need that whole invite process. So um, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So you'll just look in, in Zapier for the KV Core app. And then this is the key you're going to need to authorize it. I think they're two separate apps, though. Just so you know, one's called Conversion Plus, one's called KV Core. Okay. So let's continue on now. We've got our conversion linked up. Uh, and remember I said we were going to make sure that our trigger app, the place where the leads are coming from, we don't want to use conversion. We actually want to send stuff into conversion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right here on the name and I can choose Facebook lead ads as my option. So just search Zapier for Facebook lead ads. It's going to ask you to connect a Facebook account. I've already got mine connected, but it's pretty much the same process I just showed you. Just click connect an account and it automatically, if you're logged into Facebook, it actually automatically did that for me and said there, there did it for the third time. Save and continue. And then this is pretty straightforward. You're going to pick what page you ran the lead ad for. So I have a lot here, but it'll probably go quick for you. Opportunity Knox, pick that page. And then once you've picked the page, it'll look for all the forms. And the last form you created when you created your ad should be up top. So I have my Pinellas Waterfront Land uh, spelled a little wrong, but no big deal. Nobody's ever going to see that. And then you get to this part. Now this part, you can either skip or you can pull in samples. It's going to be useful to pull in samples. All right. Even if you haven't had a lead yet, um, go ahead and try to do that. Facebook will put sort of dummy data in there. They, it says like dummy and stuff like that. So I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. See this right here? It kind of just fills data in so you have something to map over. Okay. I'll click continue. And now that I've done that, I can scroll through the options on the left and I can start to map my data over to Zapier. So right here, email address is going to match to email. So I did that really quick. Let me do that again. So the place where you go to map the data is right there on that box. So what I'm doing is I'm going to click this and this is going to show me all the information that came over from my trigger source, my Facebook lead ad. Here is the test email address. So I'm going to fill that in here. Now I'm going to go down to phone number. I'm going to fill that in. I'm going to skip full name because I would rather do first and last name second. There's a reason I like to do it that way and you should always just do it that way too. It's, or it's going to just cause you headaches down the road. So get in the habit of trying to separate the first and last name if you can with whatever apps you're doing this with. Uh, hashtag is going to be absolutely critical, right? Because the way that core, KB core and conversion plus work is that you can trigger your follow ups based on a hashtag. So right here is where I'm going to set my hashtag. I'll just call this what it is. It's um, um, uh, it's Pinellas Waterfront. So Pinellas Waterfront Land. And that might even be too long. I'll do Pinell Waterfront. Okay. My referrer, I can type Zapier. I can do whatever I want. This is for the tracking inside of Conversion or Core. Uh, you can add notes if you want to throw extra stuff in. You might just say, um, you know, lead ad on Facebook offering waterfront land. A lot of times what I'll do if, um, if I'm generating leads for third parties or other people on my team, I'll put the actual link to the, the listings that they accessed, right? 
So um, accessed. And you can just put any notes you need in there and help people uh, see what happened, see what was going on. Leads price point, I'll leave that off. Interested area, if you want to put a city in um, for categorizations, you can. Uh, here is seller information. If you are collecting seller leads, uh, you know, and you want to send valuations automatically every month, things like that, that these both platforms can do. Here's where you can inject that data about their address. So at this point, I'm pretty good. I've, in, I've mapped up the data coming from Facebook into conversion. I can click save. And I can send a test if I want. Now, this might bounce back the first time you do it. Oh, it did work. Good. Uh, I do know sometimes, like, if the test data isn't formatted correctly, like this phone, test lead dummy data for phone number, that's not a real phone number. So some systems, it looked like conversion took that okay. But some systems, if you're, if you're working with Zapier, will say, hey, that wasn't a valid phone number, and it'll kind of break. Uh, and then you need to wait for your first lead to start, for it to start working. If you run into that, don't worry. Just make sure you, you're pretty sure you templated everything okay, and you can just, you know, skip that step. I'll click finish here. Um, last thing you want to do is make sure you name your zap up top. So my zap is uh, conversion, conversion, Zapier demo, All right? And in Zapier, you can put stuff in folders and categorize uh, down the road if you have a lot to try to organize your, your zaps. And then you just toggle it on and you're good to go. So what's happening now is that this Facebook ad we created is now tied to our conversion account. So all those leads are automatically injected in, okay? Now, what's the next thing? Well, we're down here in the document. The next big important thing is we want to make sure that we are now triggering the appropriate follow-ups in conversion and KV core. So we're going to use the automation features in both platforms to match that hashtag up uh, and send the follow-ups we want to send. And in my opinion, one of the biggest reasons you're going to want to use Lisa lead ads is so that you can send a text message instantly to that person who just gave you their cell number that's tied to Facebook. Remember, they're going to give you the cell number they use that is connected to Facebook. It's going to be accurate. So it's very useful to go ahead and send a text message to that right away to get the conversation started. Okay, so let me go into conversion first and show you where to do that. Again, it's going to be when you click your name up top, you're going to go to the My Settings page. And I'm going to create a new drip campaign. You know what, actually, I'm going to need to create the hashtag first. All right, so make sure that the hashtag is in your system. So this is a demo account. I'm going to have to create a contact. Bear with me. I'll pause here and do that. Actually, I'll just keep, I'll go ahead here. So I'm going to name this Pinnell's Waterfront, the name of this lead. I'll give it a fake email. I'm just doing this so that I can create the hashtag. Okay, so uh, welcome email, no email. And then uh, I'm going to leave the drip campaign off. Add lead. They gave me permission. And then right here in the quick note, I'm going to do pin waterfront land this is the same hashtag that i set up earlier when i set up my zap now a lot of times you might already have the hashtag you might set it up you don't have to go through the step um, but i just want to make sure i have this set action just add note and that will set that hashtag in the system now what i can do is i can go into settings up at the top right again And come all the way down to the bottom where it says uh, add drip emails and text. So add new drip email campaign. And I'm basically going to create a campaign for this lead ad. Okay, so this is Pinellas Waterfront Land. I don't need to share this campaign. If you click share, that's going to share it with everybody who uses the platform. And then I'm going to pick my hashtag. I just went through all that effort <laughs> to set that hashtag in the system. I may need to reset. Uh, I may need to give it a minute to, for the cache to clear. Um, one second. Actually, what I found was the error of my ways was that I did not put a hashtag in front of Pinellas Waterfront Land in that last step. These things happen when you're recording. <laughs> um, so I didn't have the hashtag, and that's why it didn't show as an option. Now it is here for me. So restart Pinellas Waterfront Land. So what we're doing is 
Um, right here, we're adding a new drip campaign that is triggered by this hashtag. In case I went too fast there, that's what I'm doing. So I'm telling it that anytime this hashtag comes in, I want this campaign to go out. So I'll click Add Campaign. And then I scroll down to where the campaign is. And you'll notice one of the first options is new lead initial text. And what I can do is I can set the initial text that goes out. Hi, thanks for accessing the waterfront uh, land listings. Are you thinking about building in Pinellas County soon? Or maybe just holding for investment. So it's kind of an either or. Uh, I'm, I'm doing this on the fly as I record this. I might come up with a better text, but something like that that just engages them right there. And this can go to their cell number right away, and hopefully they reply and I start to have a conversation with somebody about real estate, which is the goal. Same thing here, I can put in my welcome email, uh, and this will be uh, your waterfront, your Pinellas waterfront land list. Oops, I'm doing that in the wrong, sorry, I skipped to the wrong uh, campaign there. What happens is when you click out of the box in Conversion Plus, it, it kind of saves it automatically. So it, it saves it and you have to make sure you scroll down and you're on the same campaign. Your Pinellas Waterfront Land List. Hi. There we go. Rid of this here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do almost the same thing I did in the text. Um, here's the link. Here's the link to the listings. All right. I'm going to need to grab those from over here, from where I searched them on my site. Cool. Just curious. And I'm going to kind of just at the bottom do the same exact thing again that I did in the text. Okay, just to engage them. Now you can let your your you know you can get more creative here than I did. Uh, point is that you can set what goes out immediately, and then you can also um, start to build out more specific follow-ups. Maybe you send that list every week. You know, you you have a, a you keep sending the same link every week. I think I've talked about that in earlier webinars where you start adding more emails to this process um, that keeps sending them the link. Another cool thing you can do in Conversion Plus. Is you can actually auto assign these leads to alerts. So you might want to go in all, as well and uh, up here, up top of the drip campaign settings, you can choose that hashtag again and then choose the listing types, land, and send them all land. Now, these options might not be as rich for what you're doing, but you can try to get close and make sure that they automatically set alerts to go out for that, um, that niche type of property you were focused on. Or, like I said, you could come up and create a new drip email that goes out every set. Like on day seven, I could send another email with a link back to the property search for that set. And remember, this link is always going to show you. It's dynamic. It's always going to show you all the land listings in Pinellas County. So you can actually just grab that link one time and just send it every seven days, every 10 days, and say, hey, here's your updated list. And in about 20 minutes, build a really good relevant drip campaign for those people that keeps them coming back around the same idea and of course you also have their cell number at this point so you're sending that auto text and you can also call them back if you want to now i'll touch upon really quickly how to set up that automation in kv core i'll confess i just got access to kv core myself and i've just started using it um, so let me just show you where to go to set up the automation so that'll be under marketing autopilot in the dashboard Click Start a Campaign. I'll take you to Smart Campaigns page. Add a Campaign. And this will be, I believe, move to a hashtag. So I'll just pick one uh, random hashtag for demo's sake. Um, you can also do on specific types of fields. Um, it's a little more sophisticated here in core. Uh, it falls outside of this webinar, kind of, but if you are collecting specific types of data or you're asking questions, 
inside of your Facebook lead forms, you can get pretty fancy and start to say, hey, if the answer to that field, that question is X, then um, start to do this. But it's pretty, pretty advanced stuff. And I doubt very many people, you know, are going to have need for that. But just know you can do it if you want. You can get very granular and trigger campaigns. So this campaign is designed for a buyer. Now it's waterfront land. Okay. Uh, now always run. Add campaign. And then you can start to, once the campaign is added, you can start to add emails and text to it. So, you know, add an action right here. SMS, call, email, add a tag, things of that nature. Okay, so that's it. That's after you've created your Facebook lead ad, you're going to go into conversion or core, and you're going to set up the automation um, on the follow-up, right? The fields are mapped over, and then you're going to use your hashtags that you set as in the zap to set up the follow-ups. All right, so at this point, I'm just going to share a few extra hacks and things you might want to do with this data um, as it comes over through Zapier. And one of my favorite tricks is to actually send a separate email from Gmail direct. So instead of relying on my CRM or whatever system I'm using, in this case conversion, to get that email through, I like to send a little bit of like a kind of a personal follow-up direct from my Gmail. Uh, and I, what I found is that by doing that, I have a, sometimes people will miss that initial email, but they'll reply to that second one or it has a better chance of getting through email deliverability wise uh, because it feels more like a one to one email versus something sent by a system. You know, getting stuff into people's email inboxes is a big, big challenge. Uh, so this little hack might help you out here. So here's I'm back in my zap and just watch this uh, wizardry here. Now, if you got if there's anybody watching this and you're like a sophisticated Internet marketer or you're you're pretty advanced, I think you're going to really <laughs> like this tip. I found it to work very well for me. So I'm going to add a step. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use the delay option. Because I don't want to send them like two or three emails right away, rapid fire, and inundate them. And I'm going to just delay for. And I'll just do like, I don't know, 17 minutes. Okay. Continue. And then I'm going to add another step. I'll skip the test. Add step. This time I'm going to pick Gmail. Now I'm not going to go into how to authorize Gmail. It's very similar to what I showed you authorizing, you know, conversion. You're just going to add a new account. So I'm going to click send, send Gmail email. I'm going to pick my Gmail account right here. It says connect. You can add a new one, but I already have one tied, tied in here. And my email is going to be sent to, well, who? Well, the email address of the lead. I can skip the BCC, the from. I can set my from name if I want to make sure that it overrides whatever my email has. So we'll just do Hart, Ryan Hartman, EXP Realty. Uh, my subject, uh, saw you checked out the land list. Now, just make sure that this kind of jives um, with the follow-ups you sent automatically from the system. Like, you kind of want it to flow. This could almost seem like... Um, a good thing here might be this, actually. Forgot to ask. Hi, uh, just just one more question. Follow-up question. Question on the Pinellas land list we just downloaded. Uh, are you are you an investor? Or potentially looking to build a house to live in. Now, I know my initial email, I might have already asked this. That the point is, try to like make this something a little bit different than what you initially sent, but kind of flows the same. So if somebody just opted in for a list of starter homes, um, maybe the first email that went out goes, hey, here's your list. Just curious, are you looking to buy soon? Um, and then 17 minutes later, an hour later, whatever your delay is, you say something like, hey, uh, also, uh, have you been pre-approved for a mortgage yet? You know, just kind of keep the flow going. And it's an, a nice excuse to send another email right away from a different channel, a different mode, in this case from Gmail, instead of from the system. So that's one hack right there. Uh, what's another one I got here? Oh, slide broadcast. Um, I'll put a link to the instructions for how to do this 
in the document here, uh, but you can send an automated voicemail that doesn't ring the person's phone. You can use Zapier to do that. So Slide Broadcast is a system for that. Uh, and basically, what you do is you would record a message that you upload to Slide Broadcast, and then you would add another step. Right, and I'm going to do an action. Zapier changed this recently, so I'm a little disoriented. All right, so um, I'll choose Slide Broadcast. Uh, I'll choose the option where I've already uploaded the file to my Slide Broadcast account. You can actually directly send them an MP3 file too. I've already connected my Slide Broadcast account. That'll be much the same as what I just showed you. Um, and I'll, I'll link that other supplemental video. But what I've shown you most of what you need to know to do this here. Uh, it's just a matter of wading through Zapier and, and mapping things together. So here I would pick my audio file. It's going to look for it. It's already in there in Zapier, you know, and go through the process. But you can send a voicemail that's like, hey, you just opted in for my Pinellas land list. What's up? Give me a call back, <laughs> you know, or uh, I just saw you opted in. I'm a little busy right now, um, but if you want to reply to the email I just sent you, let me know when's a good time to talk, you know, something like that so that they hear your voice and it's just another way to make a cool uh, a touch with that person. Okay, so slide broadcast, another hack, and what else do I have here? Oh, uh, <laughs> this is on the top of my mind. I hope it's cool for me to talk about this on these webinars, but basically thanks.io is a project I'm involved in uh, that sends automated postcards through Zapier. So if you're generating seller leads using Facebook lead ads, you can actually send one postcard or you can send uh, campaigns where like you can send a sequence like every quarter or every six months you can follow up and say, hey, uh, just curious, are you ready to buy your house yet or something like that. So just some extra thoughts of what you might do with the data you're collecting through your Facebook lead ads, right? Um, you're collecting a really good name, email, phone, sometimes an address. Uh, you can collect extra questions and data. Uh, we've explored here in this webinar how you'll go about um, connecting the leads that you're generating there to your conversion account, how you're going to trigger automated follow-ups by setting the hashtag and trig using the automation features that are built into Core and Conversion Plus, and then just some extra Zapier hacks right there. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching today. Do feel free to comment down below wherever you're watching this with any questions you have, and I'll be sure to answer, or somebody else who's watching this who knows the answer will get back to you as soon as possible. Facebook lead ads are a very powerful tool to use for generating higher quality leads, getting that contact info into your uh, database. Just know it's a little bit more advanced, a little bit more to wade through. And if you want to get started faster, you can re I'll reference last week's webinar where you can just start driving traffic directly at your conversion site and that'll start collecting leads for you. So thanks for watching today. We'll be back next Tuesday with the next episode of the Inside uh, Real Estate Tactic webinars here uh, at Inside Real Estate. Have a good one. Bye.